Nigeria is Africa's largest economy. It relies heavily on oil as its main source of foreign exchange earnings and government revenues. Oil revenues contribute to two-thirds of government revenues while contributing to 10% of the GDP. Following the 2008 global financial crisis, the banking sector was effectively recapitalized and regulations enhanced. Since then, Nigeria's economic growth has been driven by growth in agriculture, telecommunications and services. Economic diversification and strong growth before 2016 have not translated into a significant decline in poverty levels. Over 62% of Nigeria's 190 million people still live in extreme poverty. That's more than the population of the United Kingdom and Australia combined. Despite its strong fundamentals, oil-rich Nigeria has been hobbled by inadequate power supply, poor infrastructure, delays in the passage of legislative reforms, an inefficient property registration system, restrictive trade policies, an inconsistent regulatory environment, a slow and ineffective judicial system, unreliable dispute resolution mechanisms, all-out insecurity and pervasive corruption. Nigeria has been a member of the most corrupt country list for decades and looks like it will remain a member for the foreseeable future. It is ranked 136th out of 177 countries according to the 2017 Corruption Perception Index reported by Transparency International. Regulatory constraints and security risks have limited new investments in oil and natural gas. And Nigeria's oil production has contracted every year since 2012 after the price of oil was dived. Largely because of the lower oil prices, GDP growth in 2015 fell to around 3% and in 2016, the economy contracted by 1.5%. Government revenues have also declined sharply, as the oil sector contributes to over two-thirds of government revenue. The non-oil sector of the Nigerian economy, such as agriculture, manufacturing and mining, have also suffered from neglect over the past 50 years. Since the 1970s oil boom, a lack of investment into the other sectors of the economy have rendered them unproductive to a point where they cannot compete. The agricultural sector was one of the hardest hit by neglect. Before the 1970s, Nigeria was food sufficient. At the moment, Nigeria is a net importer of food products, mainly from the US and Asia. The agricultural output was unable to keep up with the growing population. In the late 20th century, numerous mines of gold, zinc, tin and other resources were abandoned by their investors and left to collapse. Cotton mills remained closed and the fields that supplied them are now covered in shrubs. Insecurity, lack of rule of law, high transport and energy costs due to inefficient infrastructure were the main reasons cited for their closure. In recent years, the government has been effortlessly trying to get over these hurdles by investing heavily in infrastructure and encouraging investment in annual areas of the economy. However, high levels of uncertainty is causing potential investors to think twice before investing in these sectors of the economy and Nigeria as a whole. Tourism is another sector which was never really given a chance to take off. High levels of insecurity, poor electricity supply, poor roads and poor water quality being the main reasons. The current president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, elected in March 2015, has established a cabinet of economic ministers that includes several technocrats, and he has also announced plans to increase transparency, diversify the economy away from oil, and improve fiscal management. President Buhari ran on an anti-corruption platform and has made some headway in elevating corruption, such as the implementation of a single treasury account that allows the government to better manage its resources. The government is also working to develop stronger public-private partnerships for roads, agriculture, and power. Partially because of lower oil prices, Nigeria entered into a recession in 2016. However, the medium-term outlook for Nigeria is positive, assuming oil output stabilizes and oil prices recover. The size of the Nigerian GDP, based on purchasing power parity, was $1.09 trillion as of 2016 and $1.1 trillion the previous year. The largest economy in Africa went to a recession in 2016, when the economy contracted by 1.5%. The Nigerian economy is ranked 21st in the world, next to Egypt and Australia. The per capita GDP was 5,900 as of 2016 and 6,200 as of 2015. Gross national saving in 2016 was 16% of GDP and 12.3% of GDP the year before that. Agriculture is the backbone of the Nigerian economy. It contributes to 21.2% of the country's GDP and employs around 70% of the labor force, at least part-time. Nigeria is one of the largest producers of agricultural products on the continent. Most of its output is consumed locally by its booming population, but agricultural exports have been increasing over the years, especially cocoa and rubber. However, Nigeria still remains a net importer of food. Like most African countries, labor is not the only factor of production the poor own. A majority of the poor, even the extremely poor, own a portion of land however small, and this land is mostly in the rural areas. Many people plant some crops on their land, such as potatoes and yams, to supplement their food supply or income, as they are working in the city or towns as cooks and policemen. This helps explain the large percentage of the population said to be employed in the agricultural sector. Cocoa, peanuts, cotton, palm oil, cassava, yams, rubber, livestock and timber are just a few of the main agricultural products Nigeria produces. Nigeria is not an industrialized nation, 
His effort to internationalize have been tampered by rampant corruption, political instability and insecurity, lack of access to credit, lack of basic infrastructure, especially energy and transport, and complete neglect by previous governments. The oil sector can be said to be the only sector previous governments and authorities paid attention to. However, Nigerians are very resilient and innovative people. Against all odds, individuals in the private sector have managed to make the first step in the long journey to industrialization. In a nation as big as Nigeria, a small step can produce big results. These small steps have made Nigeria an industrial powerhouse in Africa. Nigeria is now Sub-Saharan Africa's largest producer of cement, producing nearly double the amount of its nearest competitor, South Africa. Industry contributes to about 18% of the economy, more than half of that is from the oil sector. It also employs about 10% of the entire labor force. Nigeria's manufacturing base may not be massive, but has the potential to grow, especially after the economy recovers from the recession. Nigeria's industries produce crude oil, rubber and wood products, hides and skins, textiles, cement and other construction materials, food products, footwear, chemicals, fertilizer, ceramics and steel, among others. Industrial production fell by 2.2% in 2015 as the recession was kicking in and by 8.5% in 2016. The service sector is the largest contributor to the Nigerian economy, contributing to approximately 60.4% of the economy while employing 20% of the labor force. This is a sector the Nigerian government has been encouraging to improve and has had a certain degree of success. Nigeria's entertainment industry is the largest and most robust on the continent. From the thousands of movies produced each month by the Nigerian giant Nollywood, Nigeria's equivalent of Bollywood and Hollywood, to their music industry that has taken the continent and soon the world by storm. Nigeria is also positioning itself as a financial powerhouse for the continent, with some of the continent's largest financial institutions calling Lagos their home. The tourism sector in Nigeria may be largely undervalued, but that does not stop it from contributing around $12 billion to the Nigerian economy in 2016, and 7% of this was from local tourism. Out of all the resources the country has, one has the greatest potential to change everything. When fully tapped, this resource will undoubtedly take the country skyrocketing to the top. This is Nigeria's 58.8 million strong and growing labor force. Nigeria is ranked 11th in the world in terms of labor power. The unemployment rate in Nigeria is 14.3% as of 2016, while the underemployment rate is at 16.6%. When it comes to the country's budget of 2016, government revenues were calculated to be approximately $12.07 billion, while expenditure was approximately $23.22 billion. That's a 48% budget deficit, according to the CAF Actbook. An important thing to note is that in 2014, Government revenues were at $22.7 billion, while expenditure was $34.6 billion. The Nigerian government is trying to maintain high spending on a lower income. In 2016, public debt was at 14.3% of GDP and 11.5% of GDP in 2015. Nigeria is one of the 20 least good countries in the world. Inflation rate was at 15.7% as of 2016 and 9% the previous year. The Nigerian Stock Exchange, which is based in Lagos, is the third largest stock exchange in Africa. On the 31st of December 2016, the market value of publicly traded shares was $53 billion. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has been badly affected by the country's recession. At the end of 2013, the market value of the shares was approximately $80 billion. Nigeria exported goods worth $34.7 billion in 2016, a drop from the $45.9 billion exported in 2015. The value of Nigeria's exports is pegged to the value of oil. That will continue to fall as long as the price of oil falls. Petroleum and petroleum products account for 95% of the value of goods the country exports. The remaining 5% come from cocoa, rubber, and cement. Nigeria, like most African countries, especially ones with access to the coast, does very little trade with the neighboring countries. Its main exporting partners are India, which received 34% of its products, the US received 9% of its products, Spain 5.9%, France 5.8%, South Africa 5.5%, and Canada 5.1%. The country then imported goods worth $35.2 billion in 2016 and $52.3 billion in 2015. The main import commodities were machinery, chemicals, transport equipment, manufactured goods, food and live animals. The country's main import partners are China, which contributed to 20.3% of imports, the US 80.3%, Belgium 7.6%, UK 4.4% and the Netherlands 4.1%. This trading balance created a deficit of approximately $500 million in 2016. In 2015, the trade deficit was $6.4 billion. As of December 2016, Nigeria's foreign exchange and gold reserves were worth $25.8 billion, while its external debts stand at $31.4 billion. Foreign direct investment flows to Nigeria dropped by $4.5 billion to amount to $5.1 billion in 2016, the lowest in nine years according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Furthermore, the CIA Factbook highlights Nigeria's FDI stock reached $113 billion in 2016. 
FDI stocks abroad also increased to $13.7 billion. Some of the country's main advantages are a partially privatized economy, an advantageous tax system, significant natural resources, and a low cost of labor. On the other hand, widespread corruption, political instability, lack of transparency, and poor quality of infrastructure limit the country's FDI potential. The primary countries investing in Nigeria are the United States, Britain, China, India, and the Netherlands. The exchange rate for the Nigerian currency, the Naira, to the US dollar is $1 is equivalent to 359 Nairas as of November 2017. The currency has been losing value over the past few years. In 2012, $1 was equivalent to 156 Nairas. This was our third world report by me, Brian. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to like and subscribe to receive more in-depth and detailed videos on country histories and country profiles. Thank you for watching and Kwaheri.